Good morning. Good morning. So uh, before we before we uh, get our prayer updates, we we sing uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, hymn seven hundred and seventy in the hymnal. <coughs> Shears is in the hospital now with the uh, infection. So, um, yeah. Uh, John Wright and his family. John Wright and his family. Thank you. And th they're affected by the hurricanes. They're in the south southeast. So, all right. Um, I did see Linda, uh, Larry Brule this week. He didn't. He, look, he didn't look real good, but uh, I did. I did see him this week, so we'll keep him in our <laughs> prayers. And uh, Ray and Linda aren't here, so uh, but we'll keep them in our prayers. You know. Uh, you know. It must be a rough day for Ray not to be here today. So, and uh, their family, Cole and Kinley. You're, yeah, you're, Patty and Michael and the girls are prayers today. Please. Yeah. So, all right. No other. Audrey. Audrey and Sean. Yeah. All right. All right. There's no other prayer updates today. Then I guess uh, anyone besides Clayton going to ring the bell? You ready? He's ready. So. Clayton. Clayton, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, while he's heading down, all the hymns for today as we celebrate, you know, it's LWML Sunday and the work of Lutheran Women in Mission. All the hymns are printed out in the, in the bulletin insert and the litany of mites as we, when we bring our mites forward later. 
uh, part of our prayers. And uh, so our opening hymn is there, Lutheran Women, One and All. Clayton's probably getting close to the bell, so... sins, O Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, our Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, our intro it on the bulletin insert that has uh, 20th Sunday after Pentecost printed in red at the top, and it's uh, verses from Psalm 127 today. We'll, we'll speak it 
responsively by half verse. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, but the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, or children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks to his enemies in the gate. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it later remain. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Yield 
Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his lot, to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle comes from Hebrews 2, 1 through 13. Therefore, we must pay each other closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. Now, it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is God that you are mindful of him, or of the Son of Man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjugation under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjugation to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjugation to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their subjugation perfect enough through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who who are sanctified, all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children of God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
St. Mark, uh, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant, and said to them, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms, and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We'll confess our faith in the triune God with the Apostles' Creed on page 207. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And our next song is also an, an, an LWML song, uh, one that we don't know as well. Praise, Love, and Serve, and uh, it goes to the tune of a little town of Bethlehem. <coughs>
peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The, the story in the second chapter of Genesis is <coughs> not, a, uh, not a different creation, but, uh, but a telling of the, of the story uh, in focus on the sixth day when God created the man and all of the animals. Uh, so, uh, from a, a telling of the same story from a different point of view. Uh, for the rest of creation, even for the stars and black holes and all those giant things out around the universe, God brought them into existence simply by speaking, right? Uh, by saying, let there be, and there was. You know, all the way through the rest of the animals and creatures to the, <laughs> to the little the algae and, and, and bacteria, all those things that are necessary for the earth. But for mankind, God gets his hands dirty, right? First for Adam, literally putting his hands in the dirt and forming, forming a body of the dirt, uh, and then breathing uh, life and spirit into the body, bringing it, bringing it alive. And then God pauses. Uh, as God is in his nature, three persons in one in relationship, and he says it's not good for man to be alone. So, uh, but he doesn't start forming the second body immediately, right? You notice that? He didn't start forming Eve right away. He pauses. And he doesn't give us the specific reason why he did the creation in this way. Uh, why he made Adam wait to meet, to meet his wife, Eve. Uh, but maybe it's, it's probably something to have him learn something, right? To teach him something, to experience maybe even for a short time that longing and anticipation. And, um, and women are still good at this, right? Because they take a little longer to prepare themselves for public appearances, don't they, right? <laughs> Uh, and I know sometimes it frustrates us men, uh, and we joke about it, but we do, we do like the end result. <laughs> uh, and our whole church, our whole world is blessed by the, the, it would be a lot more drab and dreary without the, uh, the eye and the touch of women, wouldn't it be? Uh, so, uh, a lot more beauty and creation, a uh, decoration to our, to at least what we build in this life. And so God brings all the animals to, to Adam, like a circus parade, right? Or a day at the zoo, and Adam takes time to name them all. So he takes time to get to know them enough, you know, to, to come up with names. And uh, he, can, he sees all the animals, including our favorite pets and companions, the dogs and the cats, right? Uh, and dogs and cats can be great companions. Not just in the house, but especially if you're on a farm, you know, keeping the mice down, chasing away predators and herding the animals, helping out, working together with, the, with them. Uh, Adam also saw the other livestock, horses and cattle and sheep and goats, which most people don't get quite as attached to, but some people do, right? Um, and there's even some of those cold-blooded people who like snakes and spiders and things, right? <laughs> uh, but, but none of these, not even the dogs and cats, are life companions equal to a man or a woman, you know? You can't have people without both men and women uh, get, joining together in marriage. And I believe that's part of what God is trying to show Adam. Is he's bringing the animals, and they each have their mates. They each will bring life into the world in their, in their natural God-given way. Uh, for Adam to start to long a little bit for his own mate. And, and uh, even though uh, this is before the fall, maybe God is even looking ahead a little bit, knowing that if or when they fall into sin, and when there's domestic disputes, Adam will need a little reminder that, that even in the midst of crisis, in, you know, in fighting, that uh, there is no better hellmate for him than Eve, than the woman. Uh, 
There's no future for mankind without both men and women, males and females, as Jesus also confirmed and pointed out, since he was with the Father in the beginning, in part of the creation, uh, he was there when it was created, male and female. Uh, and as they joined them together in marriage, that, that, that still at that first sixth day of creation, when, when they were first brought together. And so God puts Adam to sleep, right? Anesthesia, right? That we still have to practice today because you can't just pull a rib out of somebody while they're awake. God already knows that. He puts Adam to sleep, takes the rib out uh, to create the woman. Now he could have just done the dirt thing again, right? And breathed life into it. He could have done that, but uh, he takes the rib and he makes the woman, and as Adam says when he awakens and sees her, this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone, right? She is not just like Adam, she is of Adam, right? They are joined together in the same flesh and bone and, and all the rest. And, and some transplant victims say that they can feel a special connection to the, their donors, right? Uh, sometimes we might call it a supernatural connection through the organs that they have received. Uh, Adam and Eve are linked forever. And all men and women are still linked together you know, through our DNA. Scientists, even atheists, you know, admit we are from one mother. We are from one father. Uh, all humans are still the same flesh and blood. And, and all humans, since the fall, are infected with sin. But the sin is not passed down from Eve, who was deceived, but from Adam, St. Paul tells us several times in his epistles. While Eve was deceived into eating the fruit, Adam went along with her. And the New Testament says that sin and death and all the corruption, including our marriage relationships, uh, was passed down to us by Adam. Um, Eve then received the promise that through her would be born the Messiah who would defeat Satan and crush him and, and, and bring a salvation from all of that sin and, and the corruption. And we know that, as Christians, we, we know and we're looking forward to celebrating that, right? Through the Mary, the Virgin, our, the, the birth of our Lord Jesus. And maybe Satan knew that also and was attacked Mary specifically to try to attack that special gift that she would have as a mother uh, be, you know, before the fall, and the mother of the Messiah after the fall. And so, uh, we've all experienced life enough to know that while we're all humans, flesh and bone of the same mother and father, men and women are different, right? <laughs> you've, you've all lived long enough to know that. Uh, and while there's a wide range of variety within both men and women, women, uh, even some overlap between tomboys and and uh, and, uh, and and whatever we uh, call men who are a little bit more domesticated. But uh, no amount of medicine and surgery can actually change a person's DNA. Okay. God's you know creation is still happening in conception and birth today, and his fingerprints cannot be removed from a person. Um, Jesus was born of a woman, Mary, without sin. That's why she had to be a virgin, as God had promised Eve in the garden, so he would not be passed down from Joseph, from the man. So, so women have a special place in the gospel. You know, starting all the way back with the promise given to Eve, you know, through Mary. Uh, and on the day of resurrection, it was the women who went to the tomb first, right? And Mary Magdalene, who Jesus himself even sent back to tell Peter and the disciples, Hey, don't, don't forget what I told you. I was going to come back from the dead. And in, in our own time, in our own denomination and place, the LWML organization was established in 1942. Uh, 
Now, if you, I know most of you don't know our history of our denomination, but that was over a hundred years after the founding of our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. That doesn't mean that women weren't active in the congregations and in the church before that. You know, uh, the, the Elder Mel website says there were women's auxiliaries in congregations almost, of course, from the founding of each congregation to do the things that women see that, well, men don't, right? And, and, and uh, things that women are gifted for that men aren't so much. Um, and they were starting to join together across, you know, between congregations and across districts before 1942. They were already in talks about establishing this this national uh, or international Lutheran Women's League, um, it, but it, uh, it was officially established in 1942, and the history didn't specifically mention that date, but I, you know, most of us who know history know what was going on in 1942, right? Early in, in World War II, where women were be taking, uh, had to become a, uh, taking a more active role in all of society, right? In the factories, Rosie, the Riveter, uh, on farms and throughout society, even within the churches, uh, t uh, taking up with so some of the, as so many men were going off to war, uh, doing things, sending support out around the world to those in need and those who are working, spreading the gospel. And our group here at Zion was officially joined the Lutheran Women's LWML in, in 1943, just one year after it was officially started across the Synod. So we were, we were early adopters, right? Uh, as Washington often is, right? Uh, so um, now LWML, or uh, as they like to call themselves now, Lutheran Women in Mission, continues to help keep the church focused on the gospel, uh, sharing the gospel through both words and deeds, right? In our might projects and what they support, uh, projects here in our own area and all across the world, <clears throat> our pennies and mites are multiplied and, and add up to millions of dollars. We'll hear a little bit about some more of those. Uh, or you can find the whole list of projects we're supporting and have supported. But um, they continue to be helpmates to the denomination, just as Eve was a helpmate to Adam. Often better at recognizing needs and giving birth to work and efforts to take care of those needs, right? Telling the men, come on, we got to do this. You know, <laughs> and here's what you guys are going to do. Uh, Yes, it's a natural outpouring of, of the motherly, compassionate nature of women. To recognize, to see needs, and to have a longing to take care of them and to relieve suffering, uh, to act uh, each in, in her own way as God has given and inspired her to do. That uh, women do have a more loving, you know, motherly nature, right? Men are like, come on, you can do this yourself, right? Come on, you can do it, right? Women are like, oh, let me protect my baby, right? Uh, so, um, a bit more passionate you know, uh, uh, and, and recognizing of the needs of others, you know, now in this time, and also looking forward to eternity. Oftentimes, women are more uh, concerned about, about uh, their loved one's uh, spiritual health, too. And so the church both at the congregation and at the all levels, needs both men and women working together as helpmates, as God designed Adam and Eve to be doing, using the gifts and strengths of both in the mission of the, of the church, uh, as, we will, as we will say in the LWL pledge, to bringing the lost and erring into eternal fellowship with him. You know, uh, through us, God continues to bring life to the world, you know, whether through our physical marriage relationships or through uh, bringing others to Jesus, to spiritual life and eternal life. So may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we...
bring the offerings forward. We'll sing hymn 955, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. I invite you to stand as we sing together. child to be named Jesus, who would save all people from their sins. Mary, for you have found favor with God, you shall call his name Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Mary's response of willingness to serve was a response of faith and trust. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. We thank you, Lord. The psalmist proclaimed that we are to declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Help us, O Lord, to proclaim your glory and to proclaim that you are the Christ. Help us, good Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel of the whole creation. Help us to encourage our mission efforts and missionaries with our prayers and our might offerings. Help, Help us, us, good Lord. Lord. The writer of Hebrews stated, Now may the God of peace equip you with everything good that you may do his will. Help us, dear Lord, and equip all of us, women, men, and children, to engage in your mission and our congregation's work. Help us, good Lord. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. Help us to remember our church workers and their ministry, and also the service that is given through our Lutheran Women of Mission. Help, Help us, good Lord. Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Help our response to be one of joy and love, as Jesus loved us and came to serve us. Help us, good Lord. Gabriel reminded Mary, for nothing will be impossible with God. Help us in our faith believe that all things are possible because our Lord is God. Help, Help us, us, good Lord. Lord. Mary was ready to serve her Lord. May we be ready and willing to serve our Lord with gladness. Help, Help us, good Lord. May our good Lord guide and direct us. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love, and his blood bought gift of redemption. We dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. And in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voices to sing his praise, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into his eternal fellowship with him. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord. Have mercy. Amen. Amen. For the saints of God, that they may always welcome little ones with joy and in no way hinder their entrance into the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Matthew, our synod president, for Michael, our district president, for Brian, our circuit visitor, for all pastors, together with the many servants and treasures of God's church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all 
couples struggling in their marriages, that the Lord would guard them from hardness of heart, that would separate what God has joined together, that he would reconcile them to one another, to live in Christ's forgiveness and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For families torn apart by adultery and divorce, that the Lord would sustain and heal the wounded with his love, that he would give repentance to the guilty and hope to his forgive, in his forgiveness in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our president, for all public servants, for the government and those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, especially those who are working to bring uh, order and put things back together in the areas affected by uh, the hurricanes and flooding and disasters, that they may be strengthened and upheld in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the sick and suffering, especially for Betty, Brashears, for Larry, Sean, and Audrey, for Linda and Ray, Cole and Kinley, for Elsie Raleigh, the Willettes, for Patty, Michael and his family, for Matthew and his family, for John and, and his family, John Wright. That the Lord would strengthen their faith in the midst of their trials, that he would grant them health and healing in accord with his good and gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to partake faithfully of the body and blood of Christ with repentant hearts and a firm resolution to amend our sinful lives by his Spirit's aid. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord God, help us by your Spirit to fear you and walk in your ways in Christ that we may eat the fruit of the labor of our hands and receive your blessing in all that we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continue on page 208 with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Trust in him. 
We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Hey, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto us for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, given unto us for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior. Take and drink the very blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Set on the cross 
asks the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the very blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take it. Take and drink the very blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The eating and drinking of the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting, where in peace and joy your sins are forgiven. Amen. to the Lord's table. with page 211 in the hymnal, Song of Simeon on the printed sheets. I want you to stand as we sing together.
refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. One more LWML song today. Serve the Lord with gladness. <laughs> Announcements. <laughs> She's got a full tummy. <laughs> you haven't fallen asleep yet? No? Uh, Dan. Pastor, we have a new guest with us this morning. Uh, you can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Frank Holbrook. I'm Dean Keller. Glad to meet you. And uh, this is our uh, treat for you for coming and worshiping with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, welcome. It's good to see all of you, uh, near and far, uh, for in uh, celebrating and remembering uh, the work of the Lutheran women in mission today. So uh, we got a bit of a busy week. Anyone else have any th announcements they want to point out first, or anything I forgot in the bulletin? Um, so just a rundown Tuesday be the second harvest mobile market here at the church right out here in the park parking lot around, and all the way around the block in the neighborhood uh, probably so um, 
The truck arrives about 9 if you want to help with the setup of that part of it. And then uh, we try, hopefully have everything ready by 10, you know, and do giving out food till 12. So here, Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon, our Bible study uh, in uh, Se 2 Samuel. We've moved on from 1 Samuel. I forgot to update that. But uh, 2 Samuel. And um, then uh, Friday morning, men's Bible study. And uh, Saturday, LWML down at East Wenatchee. They're, I bet they're busy down there. They've been busy getting ready for us. Looking forward to our and I'm busy, yep. rallying. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to be there or are you going off to camp? I'll be someplace else. Somewhere else, okay. So, I won't be there. You won't be there, but uh, Holly is the secretary at East Wenatchee Faith Lutheran Church. So, but, uh, um, and then Saturday afternoon, the Liberty Quartet is uh, a concert out at the Nazarene Church. And if you want to have dinner, we just found out yesterday. They're planning on going out to La Presa with the, with the quartet after the concert, uh, but they want to have, try to have a count for that to let the, let the La Presa restaurant know how many are coming. So. And if you haven't been to see them, go see them. They are wonderful. They are, they are wonderful. Yeah. It just lifts your heart out. Yeah. And, and for yeah. somebody that popular, to come to our little community, we need to support them by being there. Yeah. There was, what, 72 last year? I think that's what she said, yeah. So, nice nice concert. Uh, so, and then, um, and she's looking for somebody to help with the parking lot, she said. I know that most of us would, <laughs> aren't going to do that, but uh, help directing some traffic and parking, and that she would give them a free dinner for helping out with the parking, if, you, if that's a motivation. So, uh, all right. Otherwise, then uh, there's no other announcements. It's the first Sunday of the month, so any birthdays, or anniversaries, celebrations this October? A couple? An anniversary. An anniversary? Oh, good. Is it both birthdays or anniversaries or all of the above? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It's my husband's 78th birthday and he's really, really old. Yeah. <laughs> it's not always the number. Yeah. yeah. So he's been struggling yeah. physically. Linda has a birthday. You do. <laughs> I don't know. I'm shy about my birthdays too. I don't, I don't need to celebrate anything. But, um, so, all right. I was singing. Uh, to our friends. God's blessings to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings, dear friends. God's blessings to you. Oh, now she went out. <laughs> so, all right, the, the ladies have a cake and a special a coffee uh, fellowship today, if you can stay, and then go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.